I never actually read this post. I saw it. Four proposals on how to change go hard. Okay. Do you think any of these opinions are valid? Options are valid. So it, this is a spot the differences puzzle. Hang on. Don't give me clues. Don't give me clues. Drain one and create one copy of mini deck. So this one, it creates one copy. This one costs two mana. This one has one extra one extra uh, charge to be able to get the pack your bags. And this one costs five mana for the pack your bags. Um, so overall, I would I would say that there's definitely a lot of arguments about an efficient way to nerf this card. I think the most likely one they'll choose is bottom left, which is just like make it cast four times instead of three. And I think I agree with that. There's some reasons why you wouldn't want it to be five mana. To be honest, it's I, I think that's more of like an, an intuition thing. Like they want it to be kind of like the same card. Obviously, it would make a lot of sense if it was five mana. These two top ones, I think, would just be kind of unplayable. The the two top ones are big nerfs. And I think that as annoying as Gohard is and as much of it as there is on ladder, I think that we don't need like a massive nerf to it. Like, I, I think you guys would be surprised how much of a difference a small nerf would make to it. What if you took away the drain? Taking away the drain is interesting. Again, I don't think they'll do that, and that's from, like, a flavor perspective. The thing is, there's a lot of things that mechanically make sense with balance. Like, you can look at the game from a purely mechanical standpoint and be like, okay, well, you might want to polarize its options a little more so it's less of just like a medic stable deck and we can polarize its matchups by making it weaker against aggro so we remove the drain and that's all a logical process but at the end of the day like from a design standpoint it's like okay shadow isles it's kind of about like draining life stealing cards like they, they want like you do need that flavor to be there right it can't all be just mechanical options I just like this. I think it's too extreme. I could see this. Probably the best option. Yeah, this is this is a very reasonable. Um, this 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 is a very very reasonable response. I agree with basically all of this. Uh, I'm I'm fine with. I think a lot of people are saying D is better than C, which is five mana is better than like extra shuffle, which I'm pretty happy with as well. I mean, there's strong arguments both ways. What's the logic here? Just make it fizzle, baby rage. I'm, I'm struggling to see, like, the logical approach to this. This is the kind of response that someone who just plays a lot of, like, glimpse and fervor has. How many things in the meta can even fizzle it? Like, it's pretty much glimpse, and then there's a little bit of fervor in the meta and a little bit of single combat. But, I mean, it's pretty much just glimpse. Absorb soul. Oh, yeah. Alan's deck is running absorb soul. True. True. You're right. Wait, that's a big true. Absorb soul. Got him. <laughs> it, it seems very likely that the devs want to move away from things being like super fizzleable. They've added a lot more independent clause effects, like, like very significantly more than in the base set. And I'm pretty sure I agree with that because it's unintuitive and I think it doesn't provide much of a logical upside like from a design standpoint people want there to be counterplay but from like from a reasonable standpoint a I think a lot of players what do you mean by fizzable okay so I should explain this in case you don't know so what that means is there's an independent clause here this is drain one from a unit and create two copies if it said drain one from a unit to create two copies you could in response to a go hard you could glimpse or mystic shot your own unit or something and stop the two copies from being created um first of all mystic shotting your own unit isn't worth it that's a complete troll move um like very very troll that's like the trollest thing I've ever heard Second of all, I mean, Glimpse is literally the only thing in this meta that it matters for. You know what region Glimpse is in? The the thing is, like, it, it, it's, it's a good suggestion on paper, but the reality of the situation is that there's very few decks that actually have reasonable counterplay options to this right now. And the thing to understand about, like, how, how this game wants to be designed is they do need to make sure it's accessible. And the, the fizzle concept... And I, I, the reason I suspect they have been moving away from fizzles, and they have, that, that is a pattern we've seen, although you could argue that it's maybe just a coincidence, but the reason I suspect they've been moving away from fizzles is 
because it, it it's less intuitive and less necessary on a lot of kinds of effects, right? Single combat and fervor, those also exist. They're very unpopular in the meta right now. Um, and the, the decks that run fervor are aggro decks that don't care about the reshuffles. And the decks that run single combat would very rarely want to like, you know, if, 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 if you use go hard on like a fleet feather tracker and I single combat it into something, th there's like a very niche board state where I could do that. But scouts doesn't run single. Uh, they shouldn't anyway. Some versions run like one or two single. Um, Shen Fura runs single, but that they usually don't run like one health units that want to be sacrificed. Like single and fervor don't really make sense as counters to this. And as I've pointed out, Mystic Shotting your own unit makes literally no sense. Accessible is different than the meta. People that are casual or new didn't care about the meta. Yes, that's true. I think that you might be you might be surprised how many like there. There's a lot of players that are pretty new to the game that are in like silver and gold and i'm pretty sure seeing like a, a a lot of meta decks at those ranks still like definitely less concentrated meta decks than we're seeing you can't use the argument that something isn't popular in the meta right now because if go hard was fizzable we'd have a very good reason to run single and fervor would we Single combat is a good card. It's not that far off from being run. But, okay, that's true. That's true. But that's not what I'm saying. The, the thing is, single combat is in, is in the kind of deck that wouldn't be able to counter go hard with single combat, right? The deck that wants to counter go hard is like scouts. And the most problematic position is when they play, like, um, Blinding Assault or Fleet Feather Tracker and the go hard comes down on turn one or sometimes three when you're tapped out of mana and single combat will never help in those positions so that deck has no business running single combat even for that matchup like the, the way single combat works as a card you don't want to run single combat in decks that have a lot of cheap units single combat is for bigger unit decks and bigger unit decks often won't be able to sacrifice units into go hard and th there will be some situations where you're playing like Fiora Shen, and they go hard like a, a unit that has ended up at low health. Like, that that happens. I, I, I don't think it's a big nerf to this card, though. Right? That's I, I guess that's what I'm saying. Like, I'm not saying this will do literally nothing, but, I mean, it's definitely not a, a great solution, right? Like, it, it doesn't... It doesn't really make a lot of sense. It, th this is a very, very, very common approach that I see um, to, like, game design suggestions from community like Reddit and Discord, which is people really, really want counterplay. People really, really want to feel like they can do something and have an answer to something, right? And I think that that can work for some kinds of cards but on average the identity of like the counterplay weighted argument i think is very weak because a it kind of forces you to run a specific kind of counter which only certain decks have access to in in card games there are some kinds of concepts that every deck kind of has at least some way of accessing like a board-based counter for example um but for most things, only certain decks will be able to even counter certain kinds of counterability. Th this would be an example of that. We've talked about how it's basically just glimpse and sometimes single combat. Um, but also, even if it's successful as an attempt, it just creates a bit more polarization in the meta. Because it just means, like, if you want to counter it, you have to do a specific thing and, like, go out of your way and make your deck worse against other matchups. And that's kind of just not a good thing, right? The reason it doesn't work, I, I, I think for, for a lot of people, and I saw this a lot in Artifact 2, which is also a card game based on a MOBA, which is that I think a lot of people are coming from, like, you know, the MOBA, Dota, or in this case, League, and they, they like the idea of, okay, here's an OP champion. They're, they're, in those games, there is A, counterpicking during pick phase, and B, there's buying a shop item in response to a game state. And in card games, neither of those concepts works the same. In a card game, if you want to run a counter card in your deck, 
you need to accept that card. If it doesn't work for the way your deck works, your card needs to be bad in other matchups. And that, you know, except for sideboarding. Some card games have run sideboarding in the past, like Magic, but that doesn't apply to this game. And that that's the problem, which is that you can add counterplay, but it just feels bad because it forces you to run a specific kind of card or a specific kind of deck. And even then, it can only really help in some select matchups. And even if it's all successful, even if you've done the math right and it balances the meta right, you're creating a higher level of polarization in matchups. If, if, if it ends up like keeping win rates at a more level amount, it's just like, did I draw my counter card? Did I queue into the right deck for my counter card? Ends up mattering too much, right? That's that's kind of that's that's all all it is with this. Um so yeah, I, I don't I really don't think that this is uh the right approach. I wouldn't mind if they did this in addition to something else, but I'm also very confident they're not gonna do that. Um because like I said, there are further design implications that make them want to move away from physical ability. At the end of the day, they're moving away from physical ability, I'm pretty sure, because it's just unintuitive to new players. And they don't want, like, that much of this kind of effect in the game. Um, this, th These suggestions are all good. Five mana here, I think, works pretty well. Four copies works pretty well. Um, as long as they don't overnerf it, it's good. I think a better change than fizzle for this is if this kills the unit, do X. Interesting, yeah. I, I think that's, that's a a good thing to have like I, I i think that's a cool concept and it it works for the identity of shadow walls so what precipic is suggesting is you know make it so that drain one from unit if it kills it create copies right and you would balance the card around that if, if you did that you you might have to make it like th uh you, you might even have to make it slightly better but i don't think that would be a problem for that deck it, it would engineer a higher level of deck building around it, and it would add counterplay, right? Because it, you, as the go-hard player, would have to set your their units into a kill range. And your opponent, because it is if we kill this card to do X, we'd open up a broader range of counterplay. So, for example, for example here's what counterplay looks like. That's a great suggestion, I think, Precipic. I'll talk about one problem with that in a second. But, so he's saying, pa pack your bags. Pack your bags, uh, or go hard in this case, would be draining uh, one from a unit. If it kills it, then create copies in the deck. So what that en enables is a broader range of counterplay. The most obvious of which is, yes, you can still single combat. Yes, you can still fervor. But you can also use guiding touch at that point right if you have if you have a broader range of counterplay if you actually have a lot of decks that can counter it then there are a lot more ways of th th there's a lot more ways of stopping it in addition to guiding touch you also have well for example a lot of the ways that would play out is deck hand would be the way that we ultimately try to kill a unit at two health and then if you respond to the keg, suddenly you're sort of fizzling the part of go hard that shuffles copies in, right? You're actually giving counterplay in a way that is beyond just glimpse, right? Card becomes useless. I mean, it, it would be a substantial nerf. And I, I mean, it's debatable what power level the card wants to end up at. Don't get me wrong. Like that would be a bigger nerf. And again, like I was saying, if you were to do this, you might have to buff it in some other way to balance it out. I'm saying that the way we need to think about this isn't really on a power level aspect, but on a design aspect, right? Because the the goal of this isn't what's the maximum we can do in a single change. The goal of this is how can we engineer the design of the card to be less meta dominant and feel like you have the ability to do something about it without feeling bad. The problem with this suggestion is to do something about it, you have to feel bad. You have to put a bad card in your deck or you have to run a bad card or you have to mystic shot your own unit. That like none of those really work, right? So yes, you, you could say that, oh, well this wouldn't work because it's a big nerf, but when it doesn't, the power level doesn't matter, right? Like it's true that if you were to redesign it in this way, it would be nerf, but if you want to, you can change one of the other numbers to equalize it. It's not about the power level of the card. 
like it's it's not as if you can't balance it however you want to anyway the point is that th this would give it that level of counterplay if you wanted to go down that route again i don't think they'll do that um and and there's a really big problem with this which is that at the end of the day and it sounds dumb but this card has a really large amount of text and i'm pretty confident that this card is literally at their built-in internal text limit um i i, I say built in I, I i don't mean an engine thing i mean like for, from a design standpoint if you're designing a card game for mobile that wants to be like at least a bit new player accessible you can't have the card text length that magic and the biggest criminal of this is Yu-Gi-Oh. um you, you you actually what, what what's a card in Yu-Gi-Oh? what can i google in Yu-Gi-Oh that has ridiculous card text length this is an extreme example obviously this is an extreme example but at you, you don't want things ultimately becoming this th th this is kind of the biggest problem again a super extreme example like Yu-Gi-Oh is the, is the worst game at doing this but you have to understand that for a new player if too much if, if too many cards just have like five lines of text on them that's a really bad thing and it just makes you have to read the card they don't want to design a card that you have to read more than once to understand it that's that's the biggest problem that's the biggest problem it's also a ui thing but if, if you if you design a card that they have to read more than once to understand then then you've you've kind of failed as a designer and the more complex you make it the more people will just have to deal with that and that's bad so because this card already has a pretty complex effect i'm very confident that they won't go down that avenue of you know make it kill uh, ma making it a conditional clause on the kill of the unit but what i will say is for, for the identity of you know this suggestion which is you know uh, fizzleable go hard that would be the better avenue to take if we wanted to actually you know support a fizzleable go hard just make pack your battles four mana so spray fin can't tutor it. It's not bad. It's like making pack your bags five mana is a decent suggestion for a lot of ways. It makes it definitely, you know, less kind of like uh, absurdly flexible as a finisher. Yeah, I'm definitely I'm happy with this solution. Um, like I like I said, the only reason initially I kind of like C over D is just because from a design standpoint, I think it's more likely that they will go with the e simpler and more kind of like coherently thematic option which would be c over d but d wins the mechanical uh game for sure 100 percent. i like five minute pack because it makes legos trash in the deck yeah that's probably true as well the issue isn't the card go hard, it's the deck concept of TF go hard. If they shaft go hard, they shaft other go hard archetypes that aren't oppressive at all, which is an issue. And to be honest, that's the last thing I want to touch on while we're talking about this, not Gorilla. I, I completely agree. I actually think that, and th this is, I guess, a hot take, but I mean, I would actually prefer it if they nerfed like part of the Bilgewater cards rather than the Shadow Isles cards. Um, and here's why. So first of all, it's like you were saying, Go Hard is a decent card in other decks. If they if they nerf some of the some of the draw in Bilgewater, then I think you're gonna have a, effectively a similar result as you know, for example, this like C example where it's it's gonna be uh, slower to get it off. But also, I can tell you right now, if they nerf Go Hard, this is my prediction. Let's say they nerf go hard and let's say people stop playing the go hard deck. I can guarantee you it's going to get replaced by another TF deck. And I don't even think it'll really be much worse. I think everyone is criminally underrating the Bilgewater draw package right now. I think Twisted Fate and the cards that support him are insanely good right now and can be run in a lot of different ways. And go hard is maybe the best way but just kind of the easiest to build and the most obvious and it's very good against like certain metagame states for sure but i think that I'm it's basically the, the build water side of the deck is definitely doing more for it than this card don't get me wrong i'm not gonna like bitch if they nerf go hard directly and that's probably what they'll do but i that my my, my hot take is i might prefer it if they if they just um nerfed one or two of the, the side build water cards don't get tf nerf swim I like I like Twisted Fate. Um I actually I actually suspect Twisted Fate is too good, by the way. I love this card. Everyone loves this card. 
Everyone loves Twisted Fate. I love Twisted Fate. I think that he's kind of like, in some ways, he's kind of the perfect champion where you can use him for standalone value. You can use him to level up. He's flexible. His level up is counterable because it's got two health. Bilgewater has no protection tools, so you have to build him in a way that, you know, you have to support that outside of Bilgewater to be able to protect your Twisted Fate. And his level up isn't like an immediate win. There's some things that can win over the level up. I think Twisted Fate is maybe the best design champion in the game. I think that... I, I, I suspect that if we were in a perfectly logical meta right now, everyone would agree that this is also the single strongest champion in the game. Like, I, I think that is absolutely true, personally. I, I think even though this card is the core of the currently what people tend to agree is the most oppressive deck in the game, TF Go Hard, like, I'm very confident that the the Twisted Fate side of things will survive a Go Hard nerf. And I think Go Hard as a card is stopping people from just playing other kinds of TF decks, which is a bad thing. But I guess it, it stops people from seeing how many ways you can abuse this card in a really powerful way. This card's design is super on point. If they were to, like, nerf this card, I don't think it would be a direct nerf. And I don't think it would be a... A major nerf or a design tweak in any in any way. I, I like. I guess they could lower one of the stat numbers, or it, it, I guess they could make blue card not a tune, or but but more likely they they would just nerf one of the other draw cards. And I where where I see I guess the easiest way to point a finger is Fortune Croaker. I think this card, I think this card never needed to be printed. Nobody's talking about Fortune Croaker. When they when they showed this card, everyone agreed it was completely insane. It went on to dominate the meta in TF Swain for a while. And when people got when Go Hard hit the thing and TF Swain got nerfed, everyone just played that deck instead. Croaker is a very silly card that just hits a critical mass of draw in that kind of archetype. This card is absolutely ridiculous. Um, but there's a lot of arguments. Don't get me wrong. I mean, you could say Pull Shark goes to a one one. I I I don't hate that either. Um, I, I don't think that any major thing has to be done with any of these cards, with any of the Bilgewater or Gohard cards. I don't, there's no major nerf that has to be done. Whatever should be done should be minor. That's important to understand. I'm not saying Twisted Fate should be made unplayable or, you know, or a direct nerf is warranted. Because when I say nerfing a card, often that's just kind of nerfing some of the support, right? And even in a minor way. But I predict that Gohard is going to get nerfed and people are going to realize that TF was carrying, well, the TF side of that deck was carrying uh, that deck really, really hard, and it'll find a new home anyway. All right, that's my, that's my position on, like, this kind of go hard nerf suggestion thing.